Your running cadence is the amount of steps that you take per minute, despite your running speed. With so much misinformation on this topic and the potential for an injury if you get it wrong, I wanted to create this video and tell you everything you need to know about your running cadence. Allow me to illustrate the difference between a high cadence and a low cadence with a side-by-side -side comparison as I run on a treadmill at 12 kilometers per hour. We're gonna count the steps in the next 60 seconds and I'm just gonna make it a personal challenge. I'm gonna try and cover the most important elements in under that time. Are we ready? And go. So you can see with my high cadence is essentially me just taking shorter steps. And you can see that when I run with a low cadence at the same speed, I'm just traveling up and down at a greater amplitude. This is a less efficient way to run because we want most of our effort to go towards forward propulsion rather than moving up and down. I'm also coming down and hitting the ground harder. This increases the unnecessary ground reaction force which we want to minimize as much as we can if our goal is to reduce our risk of injury. Reducing your ground reaction force also makes you more efficient, meaning that I can run at the same speed and feel less tired, which overall contributes to better performance. Lastly, if you're a heel striker, a lower cadence will increase the likelihood of you overstriding. Taking shorter steps and faster steps will allow you to still contact with the heel, but be a bit more underneath your body, leading to reduced ground reaction force and leading to braking force. Okay, done, stop the clock. So as you can see, after traveling at the same speed, my cadence is completely different in comparison. I deliberately chose two extremes of examples in terms of cadence, just to illustrate this concept. If you don't know what your usual cadence is, you can find it out easily by just recording your run with a fitness tracker. Then once you upload your run, you'll be able to see your average cadence throughout the session. Average steps per minute or SPM might be on there as well. Um, just keep in mind that if your running consists of walking, then the average that it calculates will be inaccurate. If you did some walking intervals, you'll need to go into the real-time cadence into that section that you uploaded and see during your running segments what the cadence level reached during those running intervals. Okay, Brody, I know my cadence, but what is the best running cadence for me? Unfortunately, I have to start by saying it depends. It depends because your ideal cadence will depend on several factors, such as your anatomy. For instance, there's research that has shown that the ideal optimal cadence for taller runners is actually lower than that of runners who are shorter. And also, if you're an experienced runner, you probably don't need to worry about your cadence too much. And this is because you might have an inbuilt sense of what your optimal cadence is and you're just naturally gravitating towards that number. In fact, we have research to illustrate this point that shows that experienced runners will run within 3% of their mathematically derived optimal cadence. But this research isn't helpful if you're a beginner runner and you haven't had that experience to gravitate towards that optimal cadence. And so if you are this type of runner, my recommendation is to run with a cadence between 165 and 185. If your cadence is lower than this after you've checked your tracker and seen that it's lower than 165, or if you just want to try running at a higher cadence, research will show that increasing your current cadence by five to 10% will help improve your mechanics, lower your workload on the body, and even lower the strain on certain joints such as your knees. Just make sure that if you increase your cadence, please make sure that you're not just increasing your running speed. It's a big mistake people make, so keep that speed consistent. In addition, your effort levels should be around about the same or lower than what your previous cadence is. Let's use an example. If I try to increase my cadence, I remain at the same speed, but my effort levels increase, I've probably overshot the mark and I'm probably running at a cadence higher than my optimal range. Okay, I get what you're saying, but what is the best way to increase my cadence? Well, the simplest way that I just tell my runners is just consciously take shorter steps. Doing this on a treadmill is a perfect way to retrain because it ensures you're staying at that constant speed and don't make the mistake of just running faster, like I said before. But if you want to do something a little bit more scientific, you can take your previously recorded cadence increase it by 5%, and then you can use a metronome 
or you can download some music or find a music playlist that has that beat per minute, and then you just run to the rhythm. At the start, it might feel unnatural, and it might just feel a bit awkward, but does take some practice. But once you find it more comfortable, you should be feeling more efficient, feeling less tired during your run. Drop any cadence questions in the comment section if you have any, and good luck with your running this week.